previous videos we have seen that a hardware or a system was basically given by two people called as Turing, Alan Turing and John von Neumann. Now the hardware is ready. They thought of the processor, they thought of the uh, input output device, they thought of the control unit, they thought about the memory unit. All this, all this entire hardware is now ready. But as a human being, I'm supposed to interact with that particular hardware. As a human being, as a user, I'm supposed to now speak with that particular hardware. I can't do directly operation on that particular hardware. Microprocessor, microprocessor programming can be done without using a hardware because we directly give instruction onto the board itself. We give hardware specified instructions in something called as operational codes or op codes. And then we thought of an assembler, an assembler converts an op code into some bits and then the machine gets the task done. So, but for a very large task, getting this particular code programming or assembly program is difficult. Then we went out to use a compiler technology where compilers were designed and the user was asked to write programs. And the compiler converted that particular program into a hardware language which the system can understand and then it can. So now basically compiler concept was there and when compiler concept was thought, where do I get this particular compiler and start? That is where the operating system comes into picture. The operating system basically acts as an interface. It acts as an interface between whom? Between the user and the hardware. You purchase a new system. You purchase a new laptop. If I have an application, if I have a very high-end game available, you get that particular game software. Game software is the one which is given, which is designed by the user. And I have a hardware, a laptop or a high-end computer which is available with me. You can't make this particular game run on that particular hardware until unless you have something called as an operating system. Basically, an operating system has to be there so that it can accept the input from the user get that particular input into a format which hardware can understand and deliver that particular hardware. So basically, an operating system is a system software which manages two things, the computer hardware and software resources and provides common services for all the computer programs. So basically, we can think about this particular operating system. Now, when I say an operating system, you said that as an interface, well and good. But what are the various functionalities of this particular operating system? The operating system functionalities, we identify them as components of this particular system. What are those various components of the system? Now basically, the very first component is a process management. Which says that when a set of processes comes, how those processes need to be managed. The second component is the I.O. management. If I have multiple hardwares which are available, can I manage my resources among these uh, uh, multiple devices? The same memory has to manage. We call them as memory management. File and storage management. Then we have something called as protection. We have something called as networking. And then we have something called as command interpreter. So basically, the seven set of components which are available the seven set of components which are there in this particular operating system are process management, IO management, main memory management, file and storage management, protection, networking and command interpreter. So I have listed all these seven components of this OS and we'll discuss all these seven components one by one in the next video. Thank you.